this might make you feel a bit uneasy. Just the other day, a friend found a tick on his dog and sent it to me. Upon examination, it turned out to be the same species of tick that has been making headlines recently as a killer tick. What exactly is this tick that can also be deadly to humans? Precious Ticks are tiny creatures, ranging from 0.2 to 10 millimeters. The tick we're discussing is about 5 millimeters, large enough to be clearly visible to the naked eye. This species thrives in bushy areas, jumping onto and feeding on the blood of any host that brushes past. That's why we often find them in our dog's fur and on our clothes, after activities like hiking or spending time in grassy fields. Shocking, right? To examine the tick's body structure more closely, I looked at it under a microscope. Firstly, ticks have an impressive survival strategy. If you view a tick from the side, you'll notice that its body is very flat, which makes it less noticeable to predators, and harder to kill by stepping on or pressing on them. Normally, they are flat, but their bodies can expand significantly after they feed on blood. Kind of creepy, right? Although many think of ticks as blood-sucking insects like bedbugs or mosquitoes, they're actually not insects, but arachnids. You can tell that ticks are arachnids by looking at their body structure. The first and most obvious sign is the number of legs. Unlike insects, which have three pairs of legs, ticks, like other spiders, have four pairs. The most definitive feature is the chelicerae, positioned at the front of the head. Chelicerae are the claw-like feeding appendages that ticks use to pierce the host's skin and suck blood. Depending on the species, ticks can parasitize a variety of hosts, including birds, dogs, cows, and humans. Why do ticks feed on blood? They rely on their host's blood for nutrients needed during their growth and reproductive phases. Ticks undergo four life stages, egg, larva, nymph, and adult, requiring blood at each stage to develop. Some tick species stick with the same host throughout their life, while others switch hosts during each stage, a strategy that helps them expand their geographic range. Quite a clever adaptation, isn't it? Both male and female ticks suck blood for growth, but females consume much more, as they need additional nutrients to lay eggs. Thus, a significantly engorged tick is likely a female. Because of these different needs, male and female ticks have slightly different body structures, mainly in the size of the dorsum, the hard part on their back. Females have a smaller dorsum to allow for body expansion, whereas males' dorsum covers their whole back. Interesting, isn't it? Generally, tick bites cause mild symptoms like itching and soreness, but ticks can also transmit various pathogens during blood feeding, making them a significant health hazard. This particular species is now referred to as the killer tick because it carries a highly lethal virus known as SFTS. Not every individual is infected, but the virus can be deadly, causing numerous fatalities annually which is why utmost caution is necessary. We recommend using insect repellent and avoiding bushy areas when you're outdoors. Finally, if you turn the tick over and look at its belly side, you'll see an opening here. This is the tick's anus, where it excretes waste after feeding. Just above the anus is another opening, the gonopore, through which a female tick, after feeding, lays hundreds of eggs back in the bush. The eggs hatch, and the cycle continues with the young ticks attaching to passing hosts and sucking blood to grow and reproduce. Ticks are truly fascinating, yet unsettling creatures. Other types of mites, known as killer mites, are also pests that carry various diseases. Ticks are most active starting in May, so always be vigilant for ticks when you're enjoying the outdoors. That's all for our tick video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. This was Fishy Science, where mysteries are uncovered by science.